Hi, my name is Simon, as known as Dark Grunt, and I've been composing orchestral music for a bit more than 4 years. I am making this video to help everyone who would like to get into composing orchestral music by showing you how to get started and what are the basic requirements to get into the art of creating awesome orchestral tracks with the use of pretty much only a computer. I know you people on YouTube don't like to lose your time with long, boring introductions, so let's get started immediately. Getting right into the reality check subject, huh? Being able to compose orchestral music can be pretty cheap, even free if you want, but it can also be pretty expensive. And the main factor here is the choice of the samples that you are going to purchase and use. I'll talk about those sample libraries later. But what you have to know for the moment is that to get a great orchestral mockup that sounds realistic and convincing, well, you have to get real instruments samples that were recorded with great care. I know that we are often told that the tool doesn't matter, it's how you use it that's important. But you can forge an epic sword with a wood stick. So what to do if you only have a tiny bit of money to invest in samples? Or even no money at all? Let me tell you, you are not doomed. Because there's some pretty good free stuff out there that can do an amazing job at introducing you into the world of orchestral composition. And composing with those will allow you to learn just as much as if you were composing with big sample libraries. It took me more than a year before buying my first sample library, and I genuinely think that beginning with the more simple and small free samples out there helped me to build a good base to get into the big ones later, without being completely overwhelmed by the crazy possibilities. All of this to say, if you don't have a lot of money to spend, even not at all for the moment, please don't be discouraged. This will not prevent you from getting into the world of orchestral composition. First of all, it is no secret that you will need some physical hardware to get to work. And by that, I am mainly talking about a computer. Sorry for the ones who want to learn about composing with a sheet music and a bunch of music theory. You can drop a dislike and leave the video. So, how about that computer? I can tell you for a fact that either a laptop or a desktop computer can do the job well. I personally use my laptop still to this day even though it is still preferable to have a desktop since it's more easily upgradable and a bit more powerful. The tool that is your computer will have to run a program to compose orchestral music, but most importantly, orchestral sample libraries. If you never heard about those, you have to know that high quality samples take quite a bit of power to run smoothly. And believe me, you don't want to be working with heavy glitches and pops when playing back your masterpiece. So, what kind of specs should you have to expect to run everything without too much trouble? I'm going to talk about the main parts of a computer and their importance in the art of composing orchestral music, and I am going to give you my home laptop's specs as a reference. If you already have a pretty damn buff computer, you might want to skip that part and go straight to the next part of this video. Also, please note that there are sample libraries that are more demanding than others. The specs that I'm going to refer as good are specs that could run even the biggest libraries out there. So, first of all, the processor. What I will argue is the most important part to get some good performances. You might want to have a pretty good processor with more than two cores, preferably. I'd say 4 cores is decent, and more than that is pretty damn good. I'm not a pro in this subject, so I'll leave you with that for the processor. Second, we've got the RAM. Orchestral samples take a lot of RAM. You have to keep in mind a pretty simple rule. The more samples you load, the more RAM it takes to run them smoothly. Since we tend to load a lot of different instruments in orchestral tracks, it is no secret that you will need a lot of RAM. I'd say 8 gigs will be the minimum, 16 gigs is decent enough, 24 gig is pretty good, and above that is perfect. I'm not going to get into the types of RAM, their quality and all that stuff, I'll stick to the simple numbers for this video. 
third, disk space, hard drives, and that kind of stuff. Not only do they take a lot of RAM, but simple libraries also take a lot of disk space to store. Annoying, isn't it? First thing first, you have to decide between getting some normal hard drives or getting SSD drives, the latter simply being faster. I would recommend getting SSD drives to store your simple libraries. Some loading times can sometimes be pretty long and it really is annoying to wait 5 minutes when you open a project you want to work on. Plus, the price of SSD drives kinda dropped a lot with time. You can find a terabyte SSD for less than 200 bucks in these days. About the disk space you'll need, well, it'll depend on what libraries you are getting and how many you are getting. I'd say a nice 500 gigs can get you a nice start, but a terabyte will leave you in peace for quite a better while, unless you're really going crazy with simple libraries. And finally, you've got the graphic card, which in our case isn't much important. If you have a pretty normal and decent enough graphic card, you shouldn't be worried. And that's pretty much it for your computer specs. Here's the specs of the laptop I've been using for these past 4 years. Its battery got completely wrecked with time. It lasts about 5 minutes unplugged. But it may be because I pushed it pretty hard and always left it plugged in. With these specs, I've been able to handle a lot of different simple libraries, put effects on my tracks, and even record some things without problematic latency while still having some occasional minor glitches and bugs. I'd say that I need a bit more RAM and a better processor to be 100% comfortable, but keep in mind that this is a laptop and that my projects are pretty full and demanding. You can get started with lower specs than that for sure. Now, with your computer, you almost got everything you need hardware-wise. The only crucial thing left is a decent pair of headphones and or speakers. These are important since they are the things that will let you hear your creations and you want to be able to hear everything precisely and in high quality sound. I also recommend getting some pretty neutral headphones, that is to say, not bass boosted gaming headphones or something like that, because that will create a bias in what you hear. For example, if you compose with heavily bass boosted headphones, you will lower the volume of the bass instruments, thinking that they sound too loud, while they are fine in reality. That will cause many annoyances in the mixing process for sure. If I were to recommend headphones, I'd say the Audio-Technica ATH-M series are pretty solid ones. I used the ATH-M40X in the past and I am currently using the ATH-M50X. That's pretty much all of what I had to say about the hardware for orchestral music composition. However, if you are into recording live instruments, like uh, yourself playing guitar, singing, or anything else, I recommend getting an audio interface, like the Focusrite Scarlett Solo that I'm using. It is quite important to record in high quality without painful delay. On for the next part of the video. DA means Digital Audio Workstation. In other words, a program where you can do a lot of things with music, such as MIDI editing, recording, mixing, mastering, sound design, and more. This is the kind of program you will be using to work on your tracks, unless you want to write your music on sheet music, in which case you'd have to use a notation program. But I'm not going to talk about these, since it is not at all my domain of expertise. In the world of DAOs, You've got a lot of choices, and that is something that might be a bit overwhelming for newcomers to this world, since there is so many opinions going everywhere. I think the best way to approach that subject is to try some of them out. Most of DAOs have trial versions, where you can experiment things out, and that is a great way to find what fits your tastes better. There is no perfect DAO, they all have different ways to work with, different weaknesses, and different prices. 
To quickly guide you, here is a short description of the best ones in my opinion. FL Studio. My personal favorite, the DAW I am using for all of my work. Intuitive, clean interface, easy to navigate and operate. I just absolutely love FL, even if there is little things I like to see improved. Also, there's a lot of tutorials out there for FL, and it comes into four different editions, the two first being pretty damn affordable. The two last editions only add plugins, that are in my opinion really not needed to create orchestral music. Cubase, super great DAO, with everything you need, always looked great to handle large orchestral pieces. Though you will most likely need a USB E licensor, which may be inconvenient for you. Logic Pro X. If you're that Apple kinda guy, you've got a DAW for you here. Cocos Reaper. An impressively cheap DAW for everything it has to offer. With a 60 days free trial and its price tag of $60, it can be a great choice for a beginner with a small budget. Its interface isn't the most user friendly out there and there is not a lot of the sounds to use with it by default, but it's still a pretty solid DAW overall. Presonus Studio One A DAW we surprisingly don't hear a lot about. Surprisingly because it is pretty solid and has apparently a very nice workflow. Might be worth checking out. Havid Pro Tools As much as this one is an industry standard, it is really made with linear recording in mind. Definitely not the best choice for MIDI programming, which is what we use to create orchestral music with simple libraries. Pro Tools is more aimed for a big studio. I'd recommend staying away from its old and a bit clunky design. Cakewalk by BandLab If you are a Windows user, here is a free DAW for you. You just need to create a BandLab user account to get this one, and it comes with quite a good amount of features. This can be a great one if you have a very strict budget. Soundbridge. Another one. A free DAW with a pretty clean and user friendly interface. Even though it doesn't have some of the more advanced functions, it can be a super good choice for a beginner. Alright, so you definitely should do some research by yourself about these DAWs and DAWs in general. I really tried to keep things short and sweet. Keep in mind that there is other DAOs than the ones I stated here. I just think these are great options to make orchestral music. Once you've got a decent enough computer with a DAW that you enjoy working with, you are now ready to enter the fun zone, the heart of orchestral composition with a computer, the samples. But first, here's a short explanation about how everything works together with some useful vocabulary. So, high quality orchestral samples usually come into libraries. These libraries being tied with a player that will be able to play the samples that are contained in the library. These libraries are divided in what we call patches, which is in fact a set of samples from a particular instrument. Some patches only include one articulation from an instrument, some patches group all the articulations and let you switch between them, and some patches even contain multiple instruments. These patches are what you are going to load in the player, which will play the notes that you program in your DAW. A player usually comes into the standard musical plugin format VST. Your DAW will be able to find this VST and add it into your list of plugins. Now, we typically have three kinds of orchestral sample libraries out there. The ones that use the full version of Contact Player, the ones that use the free version of Contact Player, and the ones that use their home player. I'm pointing that out right now, because it can have a crucial impact into the libraries that you might want to get. The full version of Native Instruments Contact Player costs a nice $520, which can be pretty damn steep for a player alone. The free Contact Player, which is confusingly named the Contact Player version, is supported by some companies, but not all of them, so you always have to be careful and watch the requirements when buying a simple library if you don't have the full version of the contact player. 
finally, the companies that use their home player are pretty straightforward. You get their player when buying a library. End of the story. Now that I've made a nice little resume of how everything is interconnected and works together to give you the possibility to create orchestral music, we will have a look at some of the best sample libraries companies out there. There is some stuff for all kind of quality, taste, styles and price range in there. I will try to give you a good description and some personal thoughts on the ones I've been purchasing from. Cine Samples works with the free player version of Contact Player. Currently, most of the libraries I use come from Cine Samples. I think they are quite an awesome balance of quality and price. All of Cine Samples stuff sound beautiful, even though it's not the most recent out there. Their prices really aren't that bad if you are looking to invest a bit into some great samples. And I must say that they are very competitive when you look at other companies' prices. They also are pretty versatile samples, I'd say. Good to create big, epic orchestra and to create more cinematic, realistic sounding stuff. East West Quantum Leap. This was my starting point in buying big orchestral sample libraries. East West used their home player called Play. No need to worry with the world contact player situation. East West have this advantage of having some surprisingly low prices compared to all of the other big sample libraries out there. Their orchestral stuff though is more aimed for epic orchestral music. And the samples might not sound the best when played alone, not covered by a big orchestra playing. East West also have this thing called the Composer Cloud, where you get all of their product for a yearly plan of payment and they tend to push that path a little bit in their marketing. I'd say it can be a cool idea for the ton of stuff you get with this plan, but beware. A lot of East West libraries are getting pretty outdated and really doesn't sound that good in my opinion. You are always better served by buying and honing the libraries. Also you may want to buy the diamond versions of the libraries, even if the price of the cheaper versions is tempting. Regretting not getting the diamond version will cost you more for the upgrade than getting it right at the beginning in sale. This happened to me on two products. Despite all of this, East West have some pretty great stuff in their most recent releases and they are definitely not destroying your wallet too much for some pretty good samples. Spitfire Audio These guys release so many libraries, it's not even funny anymore. Spitfire Audio might probably be the biggest out there in the orchestral sample libraries market and the quality in their products is something you won't have to worry about. Definitely more for the bigger budgets though. Getting a full orchestra with Spitfire stuff isn't something I'd recommend if you're a beginner and that you don't have much money to put into that. Though for a professional sound with pretty much all styles of libraries available, Spitfire Audio is a great choice. Orchestral Tools I've been in the same style than Spitfire Audio. Orchestral Tools offer a great variety of very high quality orchestral sample libraries. All of their libraries are pretty modern and new. You shouldn't have to worry about getting some whole outdated stuff. Just like Spitfire's Audio, Orchestral Tools seals of quality do come with a price and I think that overall their products are a better fit for composers with a bit of experience and money to invest in those sweet sample libraries. Audio Imperia Another great company that offers a good range of high quality orchestral sounds. Audio Imperia are a bit more on that modern, hybrid, epic orchestra vibe in general with their product, which can be very great to make some trailer music or epic music in general. They've got some modern, simple and clean interfaces and their products are generally not that expensive, at least less expensive than Spitfire Audio and Orchestral Tools prices. Not to say that you should base your choice by that factor only, but Audio Imperia definitely got pretty competitive with the other big boys, and while their product can still be considered expensive depending on how much you're willing to invest, 
I think they got some pretty solid prices. Project Sam. What's nice with Project Sam is that they have quite a couple of super great sounding libraries that aren't that expensive and that can add up on each other's, which allows you to slowly build your collection without hitting the wallet too hard each time. They really don't have a ton of products, but they do cover everything you need to get a realistic sounding orchestra. I think that this company can be very great for you if you want to spend some money in samples, but not too much either, while still getting great quality in your products. So that's about it for the companies. Obviously, I didn't talk about every company out there, Hedio, Sonybox, Aviacity and many more great ones exist. But it will be way too long for that short and sweet video I wanted to make. So before we get into the totally free options, I want to address two points. First, don't take everything I said on the companies as the only absolute truth. I barely scratched the surface, you should definitely investigate by yourself by looking at their products, the specs, their requirements and audio demos available on the websites to get the best idea and see if it works for you and the gear that you have. Second, and hear me out on this one, because I think it is pretty crucial. Always buy sample libraries when they are on sale. The companies all do sales sometimes, some more often than others, but they all do. And believe me, if you buy a library at full price, you will 100% regret not waiting for a sale. These sales often go around 50% off, and even higher. I personally got all of my libraries in sale, and I can say that I easily saved around $600, $700 by doing so. Be patient, it will be worth it. Now that we are done playing with the huge expensive boys, here are a couple of totally free libraries that you can get to start composing orchestral music. Layers by Orchestral Tools A total no-brainer. If you don't have any money to spend and want to compose orchestral music, get this one. Have a look on YouTube, there's quite a couple of very cool demos on it. Spitfire Audio's Labs Collection this one only covers some specific instruments, but they definitely are a great addition to your collections. More on the exotic, specific, very weird style of instruments, but very cool. The Free Orchestra by Project Sam. Again, super great collection of playable orchestral instruments for free. I could list other older ones, but I think that with these three only, you are more than good to get into orchestral composition with some pretty damn high quality sounding instruments for a total cost of absolute zero. One thing to mention too is that these aren't nearly as demanding for your computer as the big libraries. So these are an amazing way to get started if you don't really have any money to put into samples and hardware. So to give a final word to all of this, there really isn't much things preventing you to start composing orchestral music in 2020. There is a lot of free tools for every beginner that doesn't have money to invest in a new hobby or passion, and the professional tools have been out there for a good while, and they keep improving. I will be really happy if this video taught you a thing or two, or even better, give you the motivation and hype to get started in this awesome world of orchestral composition. Only four years ago, I was completely clueless about all of this, and I could not thank myself enough now for daring to jump into this passion. If you know someone who could be interested in seeing this video, show him without hesitation. If you want to support me in my projects, you can also share this video and have a look at my channel where I post all kind of stuff. I might also do a part 2 of this video, where I'd go deeper into the actual composition process on a DAW with sample libraries. We'll see how I feel about that. Thanks for listening until the end of this video.